Thank you, Benesh. It's 10 a.m. and uh, let's be punctual. Thank you for being here and thank you for joining this session. I promise you the next 30 minutes will be productive. I hope so. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. Many of you were very complimentary. I think when uh, Subra insisted I do this session, I hadn't done it for a little bit of time. So I was a little bit nervous. So I had some of my colleagues send out on WhatsApp, inviting people, making sure that people join the uh, webinar. Otherwise, it'll be just me and Vinish. And uh, I was a little bit nervous, but then of course, Vinish uh, supported the entire process with Julian, John and Orun Atika. Well, thank you very much. Uh, technically, a couple of things. If you have a question, please go and uh, type it in the chat and I'll try to take it at the end of the session. If you get into a problem, the best way to do is to log out and log in back. I think that's the best way to do it. If you got earphones, then of course you use your earphones. Yeah. Uh, I think one of the main things is many of you said thumbs up and all that to the WhatsApp invitations. And many of you just looked up at the uh, my photograph and said, well, that's really good. In just 10 days of lockdown mode, you have been able to work out and you look really good. But now after seeing me real time, you probably will know that photograph was taken a long time ago. I think my lawyer is here, Julian is there, so I must have a disclaimer. That photograph was taken about 15 years ago when we went public for 16 years ago. But I'm still working out. So let's talk about this subject, staying productive during the movement control order or the lockdown period. Just about a couple of days ago, I had the opportunity of talking to Tony Fernandez, the legendary founder of AirAsia. Hadn't talked to him in about nearly two years, so it was nice to have a conversation with him. And he said, Palan, you know, it's very simple, straightforward, he said. Uh, I used to say everyone can fly, but now no one can fly. And therefore it's important for us to stay safe, stay home, because otherwise we will never ever be able to fly. But it's ironical that a couple of months ago or weeks ago, I think it was late January, Dato, one of our colleagues at Esther on the board, she was talking about the coronavirus, the Wuhan crisis. Not many of us could quite understand it. We just uh, took it easy. And she said, well, let's get a flu vaccination done and all of that stuff. And nobody quite took it serious until the lockdown happened and the daily briefings happened. So everyone believed that China will not affect anyone else. But now we know it's actually a global crisis and everyone has to take it seriously. So many experiences. Uh, I had a professor who met me and who said, well, his son had met someone who was affected. I met my cardiologist who said he met a patient who was affected. I had a meeting with my director who said that she met someone and therefore that person was exposed to someone and therefore could have to postpone the meeting. So you never know what's happening. I think it's scary. Yet, in the midst of all this, I think we need to salute our frontline healthcare workers. I think they're doing a wonderful job. I think that though Dr. Hisham or Hisham Abdullah has been firm in his leadership, has been passionate, compassionate, and I think has been doing what you can do in a rapidly changing situation. So I think the most important thing, stay home, stay safe. And the message for today is stay productive. I have stayed home all these last two weeks and I intend to do it for the next two weeks. For many years, my wife said, can't you spend more time at home? She kept saying, please spend a little more time at home. And now she's beginning to wonder, oh my goodness, how much of a challenge is having me home all the time. So I think we all get used to it. We have to get used to the space, the time, the relationships. So Robert Collier had this to say, as you see in the next slide, what he talks about crisis. Robert Collier says, if Vinesh, you could move on to the next slide. 
I think it's important, he says, that we only understand a crisis when it actually attacks us. So I think it's very important for us, as what he says, sooner or later comes at a point in our life when in our affairs there is a crisis and how it determines is our our response is going to result in our happiness and success. I think he says forever, if you look at history, there's been so many such crises that has happened all the time in our lives. My late father used to talk about the Japanese occupation of Malaya, Peninsula of Malaysia at that time. My European friends used to talk about World War II. And of course, you read about the Spanish flu and this has gone for years together, years, years together. And that's why Piers Morgan, the television anchor host says, come on, man, have some gumption. And I think we need to work and it's not all gloom and doom. I think we need to really work upon and stay productive. If you actually look at the next slide, you will see when is it a crisis? It's a crisis when questions rise that can't be answered. And that's what we're having today. We are having a scenario today. We don't know the answers. We don't know what's coming. The situation is rapidly changing. No one knows what the answers are. So it's an unprecedented crisis. I put a couple of points on the next slide for us to understand and grasp the scenario. So if you look at the scenario in the next slide, the first thing is, Vanish, if we can move to the next slide, the first thing is an unprecedented crisis. Everyone talks about a health crisis. Yes, it is a health crisis. It's fast becoming an economic crisis. I have friends who tell me that their restaurants have closed down and they have got to still pay salaries. Cash flows are impossible. They can't survive for another two months. I have a friend of mine in Massachusetts who says that he had to lay off 700 people. It's fast becoming an economic crisis. And one more thing that's happening is it's also fast becoming a social crisis. What are the people who do not have food on the table going to do? What are the people who are going to be 24 seven staying together for three months? What are they going to do? So I think it's very important for us to understand that it's not just a health crisis. It's not just a economic crisis. It's also a social crisis. So it's important for us to understand that. When I was discussing this with uh, one of my colleagues, Professor Dr. Mahab Salmi on the board of Governors University of Cyberjaya, he said it's Earth 2.0. He said there's going to be a new normal. It's going to be personal hygiene, community interactions, business interactions are going to be different. It's going to be industrial revolution 4.0, 5G, public health, social distancing. There are going to be new focal points, government, investors, entrepreneurs. So it's going to be completely different. And I think it's going to be important because our lives have changed. Mother Earth is telling us, please, please remember what sustainability. Please behave. Otherwise, I'm going to have challenges. I was during this lockdown period attending an alumni exclusive Harvard business session virtual. And one of the professors asked two questions and the two questions were, who do you want to be now? What are you going to do now that's going to determine who do you want to be now? And second, who do you want to be when this is over? I think it's, it's important. Never ever in our lives that we have had so much free time on our hands. So what are we going to do with this free time? People feel claustrophobic. They can't go out. They read thousands of messages on WhatsApp, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, whatever you might say about coronavirus. So the question is, when you try to answer these two questions in terms of productivity, we ask ourselves another question. What have you done? Are you actually reading an ebook? Have you learned a new skill? What are you doing? Because when you take productivity in its economic terms, it means two things, input, output. 
uh, are we getting the output far greater than the input? So are the results greater than our efforts? But that's work-based, but it can also be personal productivity. Uh, am I achieving my goals? Am I accountable for my actions? And that I think is important. That what takes us to the productivity zone in the next slide that I put together for you, which is what Penny Zenker said. And she said four things. And she said purpose, language, focus, physiology. So in the productivity, she said, in the productivity zone, if you want to be there, you need to have basically four key zones. And one is purpose. Do you have a purpose? Do you have life goals? It's a great time now for us to reflect, pause, and repurpose our lives if it's possible. Maybe we could build relationships with our loved ones. Maybe you could learn a new skill. Maybe you could develop some spiritual goals. Maybe you can focus on your health goals, even though you can't go out. There are many things you could do inside the house. And there are many things, or maybe a new way of learning. So I think purpose is very critical because you determine your productivity. Number two, it's language. I think it's a little talk that goes on in your head. We are all scared. I think I saw the movie, 93 Days, the Ebola crisis in Nigeria. Well, scary, it was scary. But the most important thing is the little language, the little talk that goes on our heads, the language is very important. If we populate our lives with people who are positive, it's going to be positive. If we populate our lives with people who are going to play victim and who are going to be gossipy, then that's where we are going to be. So I think here is an important level that we have to bring up our levels in terms of the language, the little talk that goes on in our heads. I don't want to talk about Doraemon because I think one of the politicians has talked enough about Doraemon. So we'll keep away from that. But I think we want to get the appropriate language. Number three is focus. I think it's very important for us to retain the focus and that's one of the biggest challenges and moments like this because you feel that you don't know quite what to do because you're locked down, you're claustrophobic, you are in the house all the time and you don't know quite what to do. I think it's in moments like this, you have digital distractions. It's your phone, it's a video game, it's a WhatsApp, it's a Facebook, it's Slack, it's television. It's reading about coronavirus, it's reading about this, it's reading about that all the time. My daughter tells me, Dad, what's your screen time for the day? So I think it's important for us to understand, to keep the focus on the purpose with the right language. I think that's very, very critical. If we can't, then I think we're not going to get into the productivity zone. The last one is physiology. Take care of your body. And I think there's so many pop psychologists who tell us eat well, sleep well, exercise well. And it's strange because many, many years ago when I was a trainer, I used to have these two questions. How many of you think exercise is important for health? Then you would have the entire classroom put their hands up. And then I asked them the question, how many of you exercise every day? Hardly a few. And then I asked them, how many of you would like to exercise? And everybody's hands would go up. The gap between doing and thinking is huge. The thinking doing gap is huge. So we want to take care of our, our body in order to get the right mindset to be productive. A couple of weeks ago, I went to my doctor. And my doctor said, your glucose levels are high. It's 5.9. I don't like it. It's never been there all these years. So you need to do something about it. So I started eating carefully, exercising a little bit. And it was still about 5.5, 5.6, not improving a lot, but okay under the threshold. We have 5.5. And then all of a sudden, last week when I did a check, and it was 4.8. And my wife said, that's why you need to listen to your wife, because I was eating well, because whatever she cooked, I was doing whatever that she said I should do. I couldn't get to... Uh, 
some of my favorite coffee shops and have my latte or anything like that because it was all on a quota base i was eating at home i was exercising at home and i was getting to be far more healthy and therefore the physiology was far more supportive i've also had this uh, watch the apple watch which has been of great use it tells me every day that i need to close my three rings and what are the three rings the exercise ring the movement ring and the stand ring and it also tells me that i need to breathe so for once my digital device is not a distraction but it's keeping me to the focus last week the stock market was terrible i'm not sure how it is today but last week it was really terrible the dow jones was down the oil price was down everything was going down and we were being battered and i was kind of stressed out and a friend of mine said well you tell me it's not all gloom and doom there is always opportunity even in moments of crisis so why not let's do something listen to some relaxing music which i did so you decide your levels of productivity so let's just go ahead and say okay we understood what a crisis is we understood what the stress situation is we looked at primarily the key elements of the importance of this unprecedented crisis and we responding to it we have looked at the productivity zone so now let's move on to the next slide which says well so how do you stay productive okay i understand the scenario i understand uh, the crisis i understand the four uh, elements of the productivity zone so let's learn about how do you stay productive so in the next slide you will see how do we stay productive number 1 set up a productive routine i think we had a productive routine yeah all of the time we got up we went we got ready we went up to work now that's changed because all of a sudden uh, one of my friends sent me a, a message and said how is wfh it took me a little while to understand that's working from home so we are working from home so let's set a productive routine i've had some friends who have not shaved for 2 weeks they grow a nice beard they get up at about 9:30 10 have a late breakfast so the routine is all gone it's messed up so how do you set up a productive routine is very important and i think it's very important because even anthony robbins in his book unleash the giant within you says you have to set up some systems and processes and a systematic productive routine for you to achieve your goals i have said this to myself and i said in the last couple of uh, days weeks i have said i'll get up in the morning finish my morning chores make sure i do shave make sure i do my little exercise make sure i say my prayers and make sure i get to work i get to my home office desk 9:30 9:35 exactly the way i am now right in my home office and i take a photograph a selfie and send it to my team and say well here i am i hope you are up and you are what you are doing what you should be doing now not to brag about it but to tell them that well i'm an example i'm leading by example i'm managing by example so let's get to work and i say well it's a 9 to 5 9:30 to 5 work day i manage it as best as i can 9:30 to 5 taking the appropriate breaks in between eating at the appropriate times eating well as my wife advises me and taking the breathing exercises as my apple watch tells me you decide how your day is going to be and i think that's number 1 we want to set up that productive routine it's important number 2 be accountable for your time i think it's very important what you do and how you do it is very important managing the distractions keeping the focus understanding what's your schedule for the day i think everybody talks about this i think robin sharma talked about this so much in his how to 100x your productivity he said 90 90 one rule is important he said for the next 90 days 
make sure you spend the first 90 minutes of your time on one most important goal that's going to move the needle to achieve your goals and that's the 1991 because he said that's the time when you do your best work when you move from beta to alpha and your results are far more productive be accountable to your time number three be flexible adaptable when I mean flexible and adaptable, I am not saying, well, we should sleep until whatever time we like to. But we're saying, well, let's be flexible, let's be adaptable. So if there's a domestic chore that needs to be done, of course, let's go and help out because I think it's, uh, it's very stressful for those who have been homemakers. And I think we need to go and support them. I have not been the best, but I have to keep learning and we have to work. Uh, not to get upset, not to get moody. And when you're flexible and adaptable, what I mean is we ordered for some pizza. It came three hours late. The grab delivery person was very apologetic or profusely apologizing. There's nothing you could do about it. There was someone who's actually doing you a great service, helping you out, bringing you the food. And all that you can do is to just be flexible and adapt and respond like what Robin Williams in the famous movie Dead Poet Society 1989 said. Capidium, seize the day, boy, seize the day, make your life extraordinary. Tomorrow is going to be wonderful. That's what Robin Williams says. So we just got to learn. We got to teach when we are working virtual. Sometimes people don't even know that their microphones are muted. So they are not able to, so there's no point getting stressed. We have to teach them. And this is what's being shared by Harvard Business School in their publication, the new rules for work, the pandemic edition. We got to share, share work, share the family chores as well. Uh, we need to share the time, balance the time. And sometimes I do know that my wife and daughter say that we miss the balance because we are at work, at home. We probably sometimes focus too much at work. Sometimes we focus too much on television. So I think it's very important for us to balance that. End of the day, I think we need to review accomplishments. How much real work did you do? Did you achieve your goals? Did you read that one ebook last week, which you, you said you will? Did you exercise out every day 20 minutes, which you said you will? Did you spend time with your other half? Did you spend time with your siblings, which you said you would you would do? Did you visit your revisit your life priorities? Did you pause? Did you reflect? So you, we have to review our accomplishments. I use the to do list in my Microsoft Office 365 and I get an opportunity to review it at the end of the day. And I think it's very important that one of the things that everybody says, let's go digital. So I want to make sure that I would like to go digital, minimize more paper, and I want to review my accomplishments. So one of the things that I said at the beginning of the lockdown, the movement control order, <clears throat> I will write a book. I haven't written one in the last six years, five years. So I teamed up with Agnes and I teamed up with Vinish and I said, look, can we get started? So I've done about 75% of the work uh, writing the book. So you need to review accomplishments and sometimes we don't achieve whatever we set out to that's all right but at least you know that what you have achieved and what you have not achieved last but not the least ladies and gentlemen we do have a crisis of profound proportions in front of us this is a marathon this is a marathon i think Vinesh, thank you Vinesh. this is a marathon it's not a, a sprint uh, we are, everybody is working rapid innovation. Uh, everyone is under stress and embedded with fear. So we are, we are, we have to innovate. Uh, we are under stress and everybody is frightened. And this is what the Harvard Business School, when they presented the risk management framework, they said there are three risk categories, the preventable risk, the execution risk and the external risk. We can probably manage the first two, but the last one, we have no clue. No one knows what to do for certain. All we can do is to set the best processes. 
because when you plot the frequency of the crisis taking place and the accompanying consequences we can plot that frequency consequence graph for a preventable risk or for an execution risk but we can't for an external risk because we don't know it's a perfect storm everything is happening you don't have equipment in the uk they say in italy they say they ran out of ventilators in the uk they're saying that they're running out of oxygen so it's it's a situation of profound proportions no one can provide us quick answers no one knows the answers so i think we just need to determine as i said earlier who do we want to be now and who do we want to be when all of this is over the most important thing is this health crisis is becoming a serious economic crisis and i've realized businesses smes they are under tremendous pressure how are they going to pay continue to pay salaries how do you get consent from your employees to accept a pay cut and even if they did accept a pay cut can they actually survive these are questions that gets very serious how do you actually continue to pay your vendors when your receivables are not coming people are not paying you do you stop people in germany like adidas and siemens have stopped so we do have a challenge so it's in this context health crisis economic crisis and social crisis we want to ask ourselves how do we get the community spirit going how do we work as communities to keep the ecosystem going how do we keep ourselves going and i think that's where it's the personal productivity that's very important i think i say it's very important because we need to keep ourselves within the four elements of the productivity zone focus remember uh, the purpose remember the focus remember the physiology and i think remember it's very very important for us to understand the four elements if you don't if you don't get the focus correct the language correct the purpose correct the physiology correct it's going to be a challenge if you don't set yourself up for productivity we're going to have a problem and that's why we say look please please set up a productive routine be accountable to your time be flexible adaptable share share and continue the process of learning i think it's a great opportunity to do things and last but not the least with your accomplishments so ladies and gentlemen thank you so much and thank you subra uh, noru venesh julian for insisting that i get first on to this webinar series we have put together a team of international experts from around the world to join us in the next couple of days from the us scott friedman jessica kramer from the netherlands my colleagues dr salmi and a few others starting on from next week there are there are some questions uh, i think uh, i'm just reading one question from kumaresh Uh, so thank you very much and let me just spend a few minutes and I'll take one or two questions and hopefully I think Vinesh will guide us here the question from Kumarish is uh, it gives us an opportunity to be working on new things and approaches such as changing the method of business however it also increases the stress level as we are not sure what the future will be after this period yes kumarish as i said to you no one knows the answers rapidly changing situation everybody has this question will the lockdown be extended don't know people say it could be another 2 weeks some say it could be another 4 weeks we don't know but the question is we can actually plan what we can control and we can actually kind of risk mitigation what we cannot control that's what we can do as i said no one has got a ready made answer and if somebody is going to give you a ready made answer believe me i promise you like what the harvard professor said it's not going to work so i think the important thing is for us to understand uh, let's set up a productive routine let's plan what we need to do i've set up the meetings and i persuaded my colleagues to come on the meetings and i've said look let's have an agenda let's meet and let's have minutes let's follow up 
not perfect. We are all trying. We are all learning, and we are all learning what remote work is. We are all learning working from home. Some of us have done it a little bit, but no one has done it a hundred percent, and we are doing that now. There's another question from Dr. Oma. How do we overcome the lack of freedom during MCO? My answer is, Doc. I think、uh, God has been kind to us, and I think the important thing is we have all the freedom that we want in the house. So let's stay safe, and within the freedom that we have, let's try and do things that we really need to do. There's so much of time right now, so let's actually do something that all these years we have not learned. So one of my、uh, most important goals is I haven't played chess in a bit, so I'm going to try and learn back the four four moves and five moves and play that. Uh, I think there is a another question here, and the question says, "Well, what do we do when we are extremely stressed? And、uh, can you please repeat the four、uh, the risk management framework from HKS?"、Uh, the answer to the question is both those questions I have actually responded to with an article.、Uh, I have posted it. I, I believe that、uh, we have posted it on the social media, on my Facebook and LinkedIn, and the Harvard Business, Bob Kaplan and uh, Prof Conrad.、Uh, I think they have posted the risk management framework. They say that today's context, in this scenario, in this crisis, the most important thing is risk management. That's your job number one. Stay safe, wear PPE, all of that stuff. They identify. Three risk categories: preventable, execution risks, and finally external risks. And they say, what are the mitigation plans for each of these? And that's primarily what they do. And they say, let's plot the frequency and the consequences accompanying the frequency, and see how do we mitigate the risk. I have posted it on the article, and it's on the website. Very good question from Moses. My wife will love this question, Moses. How should we manage multiple chores, family work, children work that's happening at the same time? Don't know the answer. I believe that I'm not an expert. Maybe we should ask my legal counsel, Julian. And how do you actually do this? I think it's important. I think we all have to learn. I think probably just like we allocate time for work, we allocate time. To spend time together as a family, I think it's a great bonding time if we can. I think it's important to allocate some time to do some housework. Maybe I think we need to learn. I think、uh, one of my sons, my younger son, is very good in cooking. So maybe I need to set myself a goal and learn something about cooking. I think there are so many things that we have to do. So I think it's multitasking, but I think multitasking. Uh, is better when it's scheduled, when it's planned. Yeah, I think、uh, that's important. Yeah, so I think planning is critical. You have productivity in your hands. Personal productivity is all about you, and you set your agenda, you set your day, you set your life, and I think that's the best way to stay productive during the MCO. I don't know whether there are any other questions or Venesh, do I have any other time?、Um, no, we are almost up in time.、Yeah. Okay, so which means thank you so much.、Uh, really appreciate you spending time. I hope it was productive for you, and I really enjoyed getting back to do what I used to do many many years ago. So thank you to the university for getting me back here. Thank you so much. Good day, and remember, it's a Friday, not a weekend. So get back to work and do whatever you need to do.